Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Smart Tech Edition. These recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live. And we're jumping on in with Google launching a Google Kids Space, which is a kids mode feature for Android. Initially, it's on the Lenovo tablets, maybe the ones that are being put together with slave labor over there in China. Quite literally, there were a bunch of schools that were buying Lenovo laptops. They were like, man, these are really cheap. Yeah, they were being put together by prison camp children. Um, anyway, uh, streaming services have built-in kids profiles, so why not devices? So Google is uh, responding to parents' demand. If a parents are demanding this response, they should not have children. So uh, they're, they're demanding to have better ways for the children to interact with technology. No, we don't, we do not need to introduce our children to this in, any further. Of course, it's called Google's Kids Space. Um, so a dedicated kids mode on Android tablets, which will aggregate apps, books, and videos for kids to enjoy and learn from. Feature will launch first on Lenovo Smart Tab M10 HD Gen 2. Google aims to bring it to more devices in the future. Some of the Amazon's free time, their own built-in system. The thing I found the most interesting and frightening here is this one down here. Um, Google can then expand into kids app curation with the launch of Kids Tab in Google Play where it will showcase teacher approved mobile apps and games. Do you guys remember when the teacher about two weeks ago down in Philadelphia was trying to be like, um, how do we teach our indoctrination principles without the parents finding out because all these kids are doing work from home? And then there are a whole bunch of people engaging in this discussion like, yeah, this is a real problem to solve. And then it comes out in, I think it was Tennessee. I think I said Texas earlier, but I think it was Tennessee where some school districts were, were forcing parents to sign a waiver, a document that they would not listen in on what their children were hearing from their teachers. I'm sorry. This is insane. People, homeschool your children. Homeschool your children. Literally. But anyway, we have this nice, pretty, little, cutesy stuff. Isn't that glorious? So there we have it. Uh, you can get the Lenovo Tab M10 HD Gen 2 with kids mode set up to have all of your kids app here. Oh, it's big and bright and happy to teach your children to get addicted to smart technology younger and younger and younger. All right, next. Now you can donate to racial justice using Google Assistant. Guys, I'm trying not to be political here, but holy crap, they're just forcing us down. So what do you do? Hey, Google, donate to racial justice. I can help you donate for the Center for Policing Equity in support of racial justice. God help us. God help us. I think maybe God's up there looking going, uh, you're on your own, guys. <laughs> All right. In the wake of everything happening, Google is looking to make donating to a worthy causes. Okay, yeah, let's donate to worthy causes. Of course, if you do a super chat that's really spicy and saucy, they steal the message and donate the super chat to, like, Planned Parenthood or something. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that meme. I think it's on a different user account I have on another computer. Uh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to get there. So anyway, now you can donate to the Center for Police Equity, uh, Policing Equity, you know, um, which, you know, seeking to try and defund police. They're trying to add other social justice causes in the future. Um, no word yet if you'll be able to donate to your local church doing this. That's... That might be stir up too much concern. So uh, it's very good to know that, that Google, though, has the backs of social justice. Good to know. All right. Um, these students figured out their tests were graded by AI. I have to say, as a former college professor, when you as a teacher are utilizing AI tools to grade your student's paper, you need to quit your job and go do something else. You need to actually understand what your students are coming from. No amount of AI is going to do this. In fact, I, re I remember this one time I'm teaching a biology 101 course and um, it was a, I think it was a lab section and they had a term paper to give. And I'm looking at this kid's term paper. I'm reading through all these things. I'm reading this kid's term paper. I'm like, you know, this looks like very high level for, for a, a freshman non-major, you know, like an art major or something. 
um, fulfilling his science credit. So I uh, just grabbed copies of his sentences. Google was a thing back then. I tape it in and oh, look at that. Science Magazine article. Let's print that one out. And Science Magazine article. Let's print that out. The guy literally copied and pasted several aspects from Science Magazine. Now, would the AI thing find this? Absolutely. But I would have missed out on the glorious conversation that I had with this kid afterwards. Because you catch a student cheating, and I've caught a number of students cheating in my classes over the years. I mean, I'm good at it. I'm really good at catching people cheating. It, it, it was just a glorious conversation. First, I take it out to the, you know, to, to the boss and say, hey, what do you want to do? He says, you know what? We don't want to completely wreck this freshman's career yet. But uh, we'll go ahead and give him a chance to redo it. And if he passes it and does it right, we'll, we'll pass him with a C at the most. Sure, let's do that. And so um, we go out and, and I'm like, hey, um, we got problems with your paper, man. Um, like, did, did you write this? Oh, yeah, man, I wrote this. Are, are you sure you wrote this? It's like, well, yeah. I'm like, and you didn't copy this from any sort? Oh, no. It's like, I showed him the stack. Your paper is a composite of all of these Science Magazine journal articles. How, can you explain this? Oh, well, my roommate did the paper for me. Oh, I didn't. Like, oh, boy. Just keep digging, kid. Just keep digging. All right. I don't know if the kid graduated college or not. If he's that stupid, uh, maybe he is. But anyway, um, this is an AI application that was being used to grade things. But the problem with AI is it really can't comprehend real sentences. This is why as a professor, you need to go through and read their work. You need to understand who your students are. You need to learn their level of understanding and read a paper. And it's like, if something's not jiving, it's probably for a reason. But it turns out that this AI is easy to trick. You're basically, you take the, the assignment and you can literally generate a bunch of randomly generated crap and make sure the proper keywords are in the proper places and the AI will give you 100%. So students that figured all this kind of stuff out, you can actually come on down and, and uh, figure out how to get an A+. So look at this update. Algorithm update, he cracked it. Two full sentences followed by a word, of, word salad of all possible applicable keywords. 100% on every assignment. Students on, uh, is it Edge Nutilic, I think? There's your ticket. He went from an F to an A plus without learning a thing. I disagree. He learned how to get past AI and that's a worthy thing to get past. I think, oh no, it wasn't Quint. It's another friend of mine actually, um, his school used this application. So that's kind of neat. So anyway, you know, of course they're blaming, they're blaming the COOF for this as the COOF has driven schools to move to online teaching and hybrid. Many, many are outsourcing some instruction and grading. Stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. All right. I had, I had sometimes 90 to 150 students a semester and I still managed to grade everybody's paper, read all the term papers, graded everything myself. And I might have a TA or something to help with some of the stuff. But, you know, in reality, this is what's wrong with American education. This is why I left teaching the university, because it's stupid. You don't learn anything. You don't succeed in anything. It's nonsense. That's it. That's it. All right, um, this is actually, I, I wouldn't buy it, but it's cool. I like this. Um, so this is a little light panel from Philips. So Philips Hue line of lights. Of course, it probably is run by a mobile app, so I wouldn't use it for that. But anyway, you can get these and they match 55, 65, or 75 inch televisions. And what they'll actually do is they'll take whatever's on your TV and then they're going to expand the coloration out. Like I said, it's pretty cool. I think this is neat. Um, I think it's probably limited application because, I mean, you would have to have a certain type of wall and the TV set up in a certain place to cause this to happen, I think. But nevertheless, it is kind of neat. A uh, little light panel there, just kind of see what's going on, stuff like that. All right. Well, before we finish up our last couple stories here, um, if you are interested in reading science fiction, I do have a science fiction novel. We have it available as a print book, as an ebook, or as an audiobook. 
You can buy it anywhere you buy books online. You can head on over to the website at synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s. You can sign up for the newsletter, get an um, update when we start working on the sequel book to it. We'll let you guys know. You can come on by, read chapter one, see if chapter one hooks you. If chapter one hooks you, you might like the rest of the book. Or you can actually listen for the first five minutes of the book through the um, uh, SoundCloud there as well. There's a list of the places where I know there's links. And anywhere you buy books online, you'll be able to find it. So you can go ahead and do that. And uh, if you have purchased a copy of the book, definitely leave me a review on Amazon if you're able to. That really helps us out if you can do that. So let's go ahead and get on back to the smart tech news. All right, this is productivity boosting smart glasses. Apparently they were trying to raise $10,000 and they end up raising 40,000, which means a lot of people are like, I need some glasses that log every single thing that I do. So this thing will detract, detect distractions and give you real time feedback. So I don't know, what's it gonna do? Shock collars? Like you're distracted, <laughs> yes sir. Like if you're distracted, you, maybe you have reason to be, just a thought. Uh, but anyway, uh, you have these smart glasses and they can condition your mind to ignore distractions. Like, you know, the house is burning down or something. Set goals for positive reinforcement. Audible cues and notifications when you get distracted. Track activities both on and off the screen. Bone conduction speakers uh, play music. That's good. And it can track your fitness. I don't know. There you go. So... Here they have uh, the microprocessor stuff, the pulse oximity sensor. They have microphones built in. They have a gyroscope, accelerometer, Bluetooth, bone conduction speakers, charge boards. Oh, yeah, this is a glorious piece of spyware. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you see somebody wearing glasses like this, there's microphones. Like, People are willingly accepting all these microphones. This is not 1984 where the government requires you to have a telescreen. This is Brave New World where people are like, hey, give me the convenience. I'm going to put it on because it's just so cool. Um, and I don't think it makes you look flattering, to be perfectly candid. Oh, look at that. The, the, the uh, smartphone app. Oh, look at that. Smartphone app, man. It'll give us, give us readouts. Tell us how distracted we are. Yeah, baby, good stuff. So if you're a procrastinator, I highly recommend you try tools other than this, but nevertheless, you have an option for spyware if you happen to want it. And on to our feature story for today, Amazon Alexa for residential will let the voice assistant tower apartment complexes. This is all I need, guys. If I'm like, hey, let's look for an apartment, and the landlord's like, hey, we have Alexas built into every apartment, all you gotta do is say maintenance request, and we'll be there in a jiffy. I'll be like, huh, you want me to rent that thing? You gotta tear that dude right on out of this place. Um, this is creepy. Hey, Alexa, order me some unicorn meat. Confirm. That's what I'd be doing. I wouldn't be high cooking up my Alexa. I'd be mean, just, every day I'd walk near that thing. Hey, Alexa, order me some unicorn meat. Confirm. See if I can't get that landlord a lifetime supply of unicorn meat by the time we're done with this bad boy. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is Alexa for residential. It's a specific name of this individual product. Of course, it is, uh, geared towards sending this out to landlords that landlords can come by and fit your apartment with Alexa devices because that's all we need is the Alexa devices inside of your apartment. Of course, don't worry. We have taken care of the privacy. People, the best privacy is not to be there. All right? Go back, Mr. Miyagi, Karate Kid. Best block, no be there. All right, best black, no be there. Best privacy, no be there, for crying out loud. But property managers can provide custom voice experiences with, what's this word with experiences? I would like to engage in my own little piece of news speak and cross experiences out of the English language right now because it's being overused for dystopian purposes. Custom voice experiences. So I'm about to go off on a George Carlin skit here. 
the the custom voice experiences. What am I experiencing? I had an experience when I went to visit Grand Canyon and Arches. That was an experience. Talking to my landlord through my Alexa in my apartment is not an experience. That's not an experience, people. Holy crap. Holy crap. All right, so anyway, um, you don't even need an Amazon account. Isn't that glorious? But if you do have one, you can easily link it to access the full range of Alexa features, including the ability to call friends and family. Great. Oh, you can link to your music playlists. Quote, and it all just works, end quote. Company says, listing off a slew of convenient sounding features. Oh, convenient features like... Remind you when it's recycling day. If you need a reminder when recycling day happens to be, maybe you should move back into your parents' basement. I'm not quite sure you're competent to engage in society. Holy crap. Oh, I need a reminder it's recycling day. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, you can play the news or the weather with it. How glorious. If you have your own Amazon account, you can link it. And then you can manage it under your Alexa app. Amazon says property managers don't access, don't have access to any of the tenant data. Huh? I'm sure they don't. Um, but Amazon sure does. Voice recordings are automatically deleted daily after the Amazon's had a chance to make a few copies. Yeah. Transcriptions, maybe, you know. If a tenant links their own account, their preferred privacy settings will apply. They can unlink their account at any time. The in-unit devices can be reset along with any other smart devices in the apartment when the tenant moves out. Okay, look, this is exciting home of the future stuff. It sounds like it could make your life slightly easier. I, I, I don't know how. I've never, like, I've never had to remember when's recycling day. Never. If you have a doubt, look outside. When the curb starts filling up with trash cans, it's recycling day. Just, just life tips for you, life tips. Anyone ever watch any science fiction shows will warn us about such a thing? The announcement says that Alexa for residential will allow property managers to offer custom voice experiences to go beyond the walls of their apartment and create custom Alexa skills for every unit in the building, allowing residents to manage rent maintenance requests, amenity reservations, and more. I do love what she said in this article, he or she, and this is a guy or a gal, Kim, Kim Lyons. I will presume that is a female, bad thing to presume. But she actually says down here somewhere, you know, with all the apartments I've had, I don't really want my, my landlord. I don't want to communicate with my landlord. This is it here. Thinking back on all the landlords I've had over the years, I'm not sure I would want any of them to have a customized my experience that went beyond the walls of my apartment. It would be nice to be able to trust all these privacy issues, but that Alexa announcement kind of hand waves at it would in fact work be described. Yeah, this is, this is insanity. This is insanity. I think this is crazy. Let me know if you think this is crazy as well in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.